Welcome back to the third session on uh, efficiency quantification. Uh, now we are going to discuss uh, the analytical method as promised. The analytical method which is actually an optimization method to quantify and compare efficiencies of economic units, various economic units. So uh, uh, even the graphical method was part of what is called as data envelopment analysis but in this session we will uh, uh, highlight uh, important features uh, of this data envelopment analysis. So let's jump into it. So what is DEA? DEA is, a, is, a, is actually uh, a very old uh, idea. Uh, originally uh, the idea came in uh, late 50s, about 57, 58. And then uh, uh, two really important uh, models came out uh, in 70s and 80s. Uh, uh, Barnes, Carnes and Cooper and uh, uh, which was called the BCC and then it was called Carnes, Cooper and Rhodes. Uh, those are the two popular models of uh, data envelopment analysis. Uh, uh, if you want to look up, uh, look up their research articles and uh, they have published extens extensively and explained uh, various uh, aspects of uh, this data envelopment analysis. So what is this data envelopment analysis which is going to be a uh, very helpful tool in quantification of efficiency? It is a non-parametric mathematical method, right? Non-parametric against parametric methods. And you know by now what is the difference between a parametric method and a non-parametric method. Uh, essentially, uh, the objective is still the same what we had in the graphical method. It is to find the production frontier, right? Uh, it's, a, uh, 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 it's a mathematical method. It's an optimization problem. Uh, it is essentially used to calculate uh, productive efficiency of an economic unit. Uh, we have to further classify this and say that we are going to only calculate the relative productive efficiency uh, relative because uh, the efficiency is going to depend only on the set of economic units that we have considered uh, in this uh, example. Right? Uh, if you change the uh, sample of economic unit that you are going to consider, the efficiency values are going to change. In that sense, it is relative productive efficiency. So uh, economic unit uh, is going to be now called as DMU, right? So far we have been referring to this as uh, economic unit, economic unit, organization. So this agent which is involved in an economic activity uh, is going to be now referred to as DMU, decision making unit. As I said earlier, the decision making unit could be a single individual, could be a doctor, uh, it could be a professor, uh, it could be a worker in a factory, it could be a manager or it could be organizations, it could be hospitals, it could be universities, uh, it could be uh, factories, right? Uh, so uh, any economic agent uh, uh, is going to be called as decision making unit, right? That's that's just the DMU, uh, uh, DEA terminologies. Uh, DEA is data envelopment analysis. So uh, yes, uh, as I said earlier, DEA is actually going to measure only the relative efficiency so uh, we measure efficiency only in a set of uh, DMUs. If, you, if the set changes, the, the efficiency values are likely to change. So uh, let, us, let us understand the logic. Uh, it is going to build actually a optimization problem for each DMU. So if there are uh, earlier in the sales example, we had five sales offices, we are going to actually formulate five optimization problems, one for each sales office, one for each DMU, right? Uh, solve these optimization problems and look at their objective function value and decide whether this particular DMU uh, is uh, efficient or not efficient. Right. So let us understand the logic. Let us understand the logic. First of all, uh, let us understand that we are going to consider multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Uh, we started doing that from our graphical method where we had at least uh, uh, more inputs or we had more outputs. Right. We saw those two examples. So uh, since uh, we are going to have multiple inputs and multiple outputs, uh, we are going to define instead of a simple ratio of output divided by input, we are going to define what is called as weighted ratios. Now what is weighted ratios? We are going to say that every input has a weight and every output has a weight. So uh, why, why do we want these weights to be added? Uh, we want these weights to be added because inputs may not be directly additive. For example, inputs, as I said, uh, I invested 1 lakh rupees uh, uh, in my factory. I hired uh, 10 workers, right? So I invested 1 lakh rupees. 
that one lakh rupees uh, may have gone in uh, renting the factory paying the electricity bill or whatever plus i had a workforce of uh, 10 workers now these two are uh, two separate inputs how do you add up 1 lakh plus 10 right 1 lakh rupee invested 10 workers working how do you how do you quantify uh, how do you add up 1 lakh plus 10 doesn't make sense therefore we are going to multiply each of the inputs by a weight right uh, weight for each inputs right uh, so uh, so uh, let us say that uh, input 1 uh, plus input 2 right uh, now input 1 could be 1 lakh rupees uh this is uh, rupees uh, uh, or uh, dollar and this could be number of workers uh, as i said earlier this may not be directly additive so what what do i do i multiply each one of them by their respective weights w1 and w2 and then i say that it is only a weighted input and weighted output similarly i can do that for every output now output need not always be directly additive for example in the previous uh, uh, scenario of uh, comparing sales offices uh, we said sales achieved and potential leads generated those were the two outputs now the sales achieved was in terms of 11 lakhs and 7 lakhs and uh, what not the number of potential leads uh, were uh, 15 13 10 you can't directly add them obviously you can't add them so what you are going to do is uh, define output weights and uh, uh, only add up the weighted outputs together right uh, that's that's the idea that's the first idea since we are going to consider multiple inputs and multiple outputs you cannot directly add them you are only going to weight them so define weights for each input define weights for every output and then take the summation of weighted out input take the summation of weighted output and only then take the ratio so essentially this is the weighted input uh, w1 plus uh, w1 i1 plus w2 i2 we are going to similarly do ui o1 plus u2 o2 so this is the weight for output number 1 this is actually the output number 1 this is the weight for output number 2 this is the actual output number 2 so this is the weighted output and then the efficiency is going to be uh, weighted in uh, output which is u1 o1 plus u2 o2 divided by weighted input which is w1 i1 plus w2 i2 right so the ratio is only going to be a weighted ratio but we don't know these weights how do you decide uh, uh, the sales have to be multiplied by u1 right that's the output sales is the output now i have multiplied sales with a uh, output weight of u1 what is the value of uh, u1 i know the value of uh, sales that i have achieved i, I if i am dmu Uh, if i am a decision making unit i know how much sales i have generated i know how many leads i have uh, uh, generated in this particular uh, time period this particular quarter i know o2 value how do you want me to know u2 value which is the weight for the second output that's a big question right and uh, a solution to that is we actually don't pre assume the values of u1 u2 we don't pre assume the value of w1 w2 remember w1 w2 are the input weights u1 u2 are the output weights in this particular uh, scribbling here uh, we don't know the value of them we don't presuppose the value of these we let the optimization engine tell us the optimal weights to be assigned to inputs and outputs so we actually let the dmu choose right we let the dmu choose the weights for the input and the weight for the output to the best of their advantage right we let that happen right and and we will we'll explain why we let that happen right uh, let us let us use uh, cricketing lingo everybody understands hopefully cricketing cricketing uh, uh, example so uh, let us say that uh, uh, one particular bowler uh, uh, is uh, pretty good at bowling maidens right maiden overs right pretty good uh, now maiden overs uh, i don't know probably you will want, you would want to consider them as uh, output maiden overs is an output right uh, probably uh, so uh, against number of wickets taken right uh, again wickets taken is also considered can be considered as output so uh, how do you how do you look at uh, uh, effectiveness of efficiency of a bowler higher maiden overs that uh, he bowls or she bowls uh, good uh, more number of wickets that uh, she takes good right uh, so in that sense they are considered output because they are higher the better more number of maiden overs better more number of wickets better 
So let us say that there is a particular bowler uh, who actually regularly bowls maiden overs but doesn't bowl, uh, doesn't take that many, uh, uh, those many wickets. So we allow this bowler to assign a higher weight to maiden overs and assign a lower weight to uh, wickets. We let that happen, right, to the best of their advantage. We let the DMU choose the output weights and uh, input weights uh, so that they benefit the most. It's okay. We will we'll explain that in a moment. So we don't presuppose the values of weights. We let the DMU choose. And how does the DMU choose? The DMU chooses through an optimization engine. Right. Uh, and what is the objective that uh, uh, the DMU chooses the weights with? Uh, what is the logic of choosing the weights? They should choose the input weights and output weights in such a way that their efficiency is maximized. Right, so it's a maximization of efficiency problem. So uh, maximize your efficiency. How is efficiency calculated? Efficiency is calculated as a weighted ratio. Now you choose your output weights carefully. You choose your input weights carefully so that your efficiency is maximized. And we tell every DMU to do this. We tell every DMU. So for every DMU, the output weight value, the input weights value are going to be different. Right. So uh, this is the optimization problem that we want every DMU to solve. Look at your weights, choose the weights carefully. So these are your decision variables. You choose your weights. So that's the decision that you have to make. What is the weight assigned to output number one? What is the weight assigned to, assigned to output number two? What is the weight assigned to input number one? What is the weight assigned to input number three? All that, right? Choose your weights carefully. That's the decision that you have to make. Towards what goal? The goal should be to maximize your own efficiency, not somebody else's efficiency, your own efficiency. This is the optimization problem that they should be solving and this should be solved by every DMU independently of others. What should be the constraint on this optimization problem? We have formulated the objective of uh, this optimization problem. What should be the constraints on this problem? Obviously. In general, it is very uh, common to say that efficiency can only be one or less, right? Uh, efficiency in general cannot be more than one. So, uh, uh, in general, uh, we are we are saying that uh, uh, your your weights should be such that nobody gets an efficiency more than one, right? Uh, now, if you look at uh, the first example where we had a single input and a single output, uh, the budget and uh, I think the sales, uh, uh, the sales, uh, the quantum of sales, the ratios turned out to be more than one, if you recall that example. But uh, in defense, uh, we are going to say that those were very plain uh, bare ratios and those were not weighted ratios. Now the objective is very different. The objective is choose the weights carefully. So we should have chosen the weights carefully there also. Uh, so that uh, the efficiency doesn't uh, get quoted as more than one. It doesn't make sense, no? So, uh, uh, so that should be the constraint on this problem. Choose your weights, choose your, maximize, uh, choose your weights and maximize your efficiency such that your efficiency cannot be more than one. So if you are the most efficient uh, DMU, your efficiency will be equal to one. And all the inefficient uh, DMUs will report uh, efficiency of less than one. Right. So this should be the constraint. One more twist. Now, uh, not only should this constraint be applicable to this DMU, which is actually solving this problem, right? This constraint should be applicable to all the DMUs. What do I mean? Uh, let us say that the sales office one, right? Sales office one. Sales office one is solving the optimization problem where it is trying to choose the weights carefully so that it maximizes its own efficiency, right? Let us say that it is doing that. Now using the weights of sales office one, using the weights of sales office one, the other sales offices should not report an efficiency of more than one because whatever happens, efficiency cannot be more than one. Okay, so let me say that constraint again. Not only should your efficiency be less than one, the, the weight should be chosen carefully such that the efficiency is maximized, but the efficiency value reported cannot be more than one, not only for you, 
but using your weights using the weights of sales office 1 the other sales offices also should not report an efficiency of more than one that's the constraint that we are going to add to our optimization problem right so uh, what are the constraints choose the weights right such that using these weights using these weights none of the dmus including yourself none of the dmus should get an efficiency more than 1 that's the constraint that's the optimization problem right here now you have defined the objective of an optimization problem you have defined the constraints you have defined the decision variables those are the three important components of an optimization problem and you have defined all three of them okay going further right uh, going further uh obviously every dmu has a uh, right to choose their own input and output weights now if using my own input weights and my own output weights if i can't reach the efficiency of 1 that really means that i am not efficient right let let, let me repeat that argument if i am given the freedom to choose any input weight and any output weight right i have the freedom to 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 choose my own input weights and my own output weights using my own input weights and my own output weights if i can't tell you that my efficiency is 1 that really means i am not efficient right clearly uh however uh using your weights right using your input weights and your output weights if some other dmu gets an efficiency of 1 right they here you are not even giving them the freedom to choose their weights they are taking your weights right they are taking your input weights and they are taking your output weights even with your input weights and your output weights if they get an efficiency of 1 clearly they are so much better right clearly they are good so uh, then that particular other dmu right look at look at the scenario using your input weights and your output weights they can still quote an efficiency of 1 if they were given the freedom to choose input and output weights they would have definitely done uh, done the same they would have turned out to be efficient ones so whatever way you say it they are good the other dmu is efficient dmu right and always remember always remember that we are we are uh, referring to only relative efficiency so the efficiency numbers depend only on the set of sales offices that you have considered in the analysis all right is the is the logic clear uh, is the logic clear can we move to the actual formulation of the optimization problem uh, here i must refer you to an earlier session done by dr shrivatsa Uh, where uh, he had uh, given the prelim uh, preliminary uh, basics of uh, operations research and formulation of a optimization problem the linear problem right here also the objective is the same we are hoping that our optimization problem turns out to be a linear optimization problem so if you are ready uh, we can get into the formulation of the optimization problem if you want to pause here and go back and refer to those sessions by dr shrivatsa where he explains operations research feel free to do that but let us proceed with mathematical formulation of our optimization problem now towards that let us define the notations let us uh, say that the number of dmus considers considered in this data set be k capital k right uh, so uh, in the in the examples that we have looked at so far we had five sales offices so here k was 5 for example our capital k was 5 right uh, number of inputs considered uh, is capital m number of outputs considered is capital m so far we have looked at uh, two input example so capital n was 2 we have looked at two output example so capital m was 2 right uh, so that's what we are saying now this i i k capital i subscript i k is the notation that is going to be used for the value of input i for a dmu k right let me take you to an example yeah so this is this was an input this was an input this was input number 
this was input number two now input number one has a value of three lakhs for sales office one so input number one for sales office one is equal to three lakhs input number one for sales office two has a value of two lakh fifty six thousand input number two for sales office one has a value of 13 input number two sales office four has a value of 10 right you get the idea similarly <coughs> sales was an output number of leads was also an output so o1 is the output number one which is sales o2 is the output number two which is number of leads so O11, output number one for sales office number one is 11 lakhs and 10,000. Output number one for sales office five is 24 lakhs. Output number two for sales office three, output number two for sales office three has a value of 12. Right. That's what the notation means. That's what the notation means. So that's how you define I, I, K and O, J, K. It is the value of output J for a DMU K, right? For a DMU K where uh, J goes from 1 to M because there are M outputs and K goes from 1 to K because there are K DMUs considered in our data set, considered in our data set. Now simply considering the input values and the output values is not sufficient. Earlier we have defined that these should be weighted inputs and weighted outputs. So let us define the weights. X, I, K and Y, J, K are the weights. X, I, K is the weight assigned to input I by DMU K. Right, go back. Right here. So here, this is the input one okay input one input two for this input right let us consider sales office one now sales office one is going to assign a weight of x one one what does this mean weight assigned to input number one by sales office number one this will be x one sorry x two one this will be x two one input number two DMU number one. This is still sales office number one. Okay, this is still sales office number one. Right. What will this is? Uh, what is this? This is weight assigned by sales office four to input number two. So this will be two uh, input number two assigned by sales office number four. So this is x i k, k is the DMU, i is the number of inputs, right, the input subscript. Similarly y j k, right, y j k, very similar, that is the weight assigned to outputs by that particular DMU. So uh, uh, sales office 3, this is output number 1, output number 1 is sales. So for sales, uh, DMU 3 uh, says that y 1 3 input number 1 sales office 3 is assigning the weight therefore this weight is going to be w1 uh, sorry not w y13 okay and finally efficiency of a dmu uh, k is going to be denoted by ek efficiency of the kth dmu right so those are the notations now what is this optimization problem what is this optimization problem? Optimization problem is maximize the efficiency by carefully choosing the weights. Right? This, this line here. How do you write this statement mathematically? So having explained the notations uh, on the previous slide and the objective of the optimization problem, the, now the goal is to formulate the problem mathematically. How do we formulate the uh, optimization problem where the goal is to maximize the efficiency by choosing the correct set of weights. So first of all, let us start by defining the efficiency. 
Uh, efficiency is uh, defined as the ratio of weighted output to the weighted input. Uh, it is ratio of the weighted output to the weighted input. Uh, output divided by input was the definition. Now we are just going to assign weights and it is going to be summation of output weights in the numerator, summation of uh, summation of weighted inputs in the denominator, summation of weighted output in the numerator, summation of weighted input in the denominator. Summation of weighted output in the numerator, summation of weighted input in the denominator. So uh, and uh, the weights are essentially decided by the uh, DMU. They choose their own weights so that their efficiency is maximized. So how do you write the expression for weighted output? You write that uh, for a particular DMU K, uh, the weighted output and the weighted inputs are given by this. So essentially uh, uh, O1K is the first output for uh, DMU K. Uh, O2K is the second output for DMU K. O3K is the uh, third output for DMUK. OMK is the uh, mth output for DMUK. If you remember, we had m outputs. We had m outputs. So, uh, and then the DMU assigns weights to the output. So, Y1K is the weight for the first output. Y2K is the weight for the second output. YMK is the weight for the mth output. This is the numerator, this is the weighted output. Now the weighted uh, input which is the denominator. So I1K, I2K, I3K are the inputs. Input number 1, input number 2, input number 3 for the kth new DMU. We are considering kth DMU because that is the example here. We are looking at the efficiency of the kth DMU. And the weights X1K is the weight for the first input assigned by DMU-K x2k is the input for the second weight assigned by dmu k there are n such inputs so i n k will be the value of the nth input for dmu k x n k will be the weight assigned to the nth input by dmu k that is how you define the uh, efficiency as the ratio of weighted output to the weighted input the optimization problem is to maximize my own efficiency, their own efficiency by adjusting the weights assigned for inputs and outputs. So how do you write that mathematically? Uh, uh, and, and obviously the constraint that using my weights, nobody else, no, none of the DMUs should get an efficiency of more than one. Therefore, the way we write the optimization problem is uh, the objective function, which is maximize EK. That's what every DMU is interested not to maximize everybody else's efficiency. Remember, this is DMU-K solving the problem. So what is the objective for DMU-K? Maximize my own efficiency, right? Maximize their own efficiency. They are not interested. This is not social good. I am trying to maximize my own efficiency. What are the constraints? Using my weights, none of the DMU should get an efficiency of more than one. So how do you write that constraint mathematically? You say that efficiency value for every DMU, efficiency value for DMU number one, efficiency value for DMU number two, efficiency value for DMU number three, efficiency value for DMU number K, where this DMU will also be there. Everybody should get an efficiency of less than or equal to one. That's the constraint. Right. So those are the constraints. How many such constraints will be there? There will be K such constraints, capital K such constraints. If you have five sales offices, in your data set, you are going to get five such constraints for every DMU trying to solve this problem. Every DMU will say that, well, using my weights, none of the DMUs, including myself, should get an efficiency of more than one. What are the decision variables here? The decision variables are the X and Y's, which are the input weights and the output weights. Now, this is not, so what is this notation? This notation is for all I, for all J, right? This is the notation. This is called for all. So this is for all i. This is for all j's. Now I have not written for all k's. Why is that? Why is that not included here? Because when the DMU k solves this optimization problem, it doesn't optimally decides the weight for everybody. It says these are the weights that I am going to use. 
सो इट डजेंट चूज वेट्स फॉर एवरीबडी इट चूजेस वेट्स ओनली फॉर इट सेल्फ सो यू डोंट एक्चुअली नीड फॉर ऑल की दे आर फॉर इट इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड राइट हियर दैट अगेन राइट हियर दैट अगेन एवरी डी एम यू इज इंटरेस्टेड इन ओनली चूजिंग द वेट्स फॉर इट सेल्फ इट इज नॉट enforcing these weights on everybody else therefore the decision variables are not weights for everybody else decision variables are what weights what input weights and what output weights should i be using so that my efficiency gets maximized but none of the efficiency values are more than 1 that's the optimization problem i hope the optimization problem is now clear to you now what are the complexities right what are the complexities of this optimization problem did you know did you notice this optimization problem carefully what is the objective function objective function is ek now what is ek where is my ek this is my ek this is my ek what are my decision variables my decision variables are x and y now recall the uh, uh, operations research session that you had earlier uh here the decision variables are represented as ratios right y y 1k y 2k y 3k and denominator has x 1k x 2k x 3k and so on so what we have is a scenario where the objective function is a ratio of decision variables what are the constraints constraints are ek less than 1 right ek less than or equal to 1 once again your constraints are ratios of decision variable constraints are ratios of decision variables so this optimization problem is going to be not an easy problem to solve because we have objective function as well as constraints which are not linear functions of the decision variable right so uh, both the objective function as well as constraints are ratios of decision variables since they are ratios they are essentially non linear formulation objective function is a non linear function of the decision variables because it's a ratio constraints are also non linear functions of the decision variables because they are also ratios so what we have is a non linear optimization problem you never had a primer on non linear optimization you only have understood how to solve linear optimization problem so let us do the next uh, logical step what is that step let us linearize the problem let us make this non linear optimization problem a linear optimization problem why of course because a linear optimization problem is a easier problem to solve is so much more easier right non linear optimization problems have all kinds of complexities let us do away with that let us linearize the problem without losing the essence of the problem essence is the following we are still in the business of maximizing the efficiency of a particular dmu we are still saying that the dmu should choose the weights so that the efficiency values don't go beyond 1 for anybody that's the essence we will not lose the essence but still try to linearize the problem how do you do that okay what do we do is to linearize instead of maximizing the entire efficiency value instead of maximizing the entire efficiency value which is the ratio of output divided by input we will only maximize the numerator right anyway you know Uh, if you maximize the numerator your ek value will get uh, uh, you will get higher uh, ek value will get higher so we selectively choose maximizing the numerator and then normalizing the denominator right how to linearize this problem we linearize this problem by maximizing the numerator in that efficiency equation and normalizing the denominator to 1 now denominator is 1 therefore actually there is no fraction efficiency is divided by weighted output divided by weighted input now you are maximizing the weighted output and you are saying weighted input is actually equal to 1 so therefore there is no de denominator so you are simply maximizing the numerator right and the constraints 
to linearize the constraint we rearrange the constraints in such a way that they become linear they appear to be linear right so essentially we are saying that uh, uh, numerator divided by denominator has to be less than or equal to 1 and then we say that ah this is non linear because it's a ratio so what we will do is we will rewrite the constraints such that we say that numerator is less than or equal to the denominator numerator is a linear function of weights denominator is a linear function of weights so now this constraint has become a linear function of the input weights and output weights here the way the constraint was written it appeared that it is a non linear function of decision variables here it has been converted to a linear function of decision variables. What is the resultant optimization problem? Uh, the resultant optimization problem is a linear problem for a particular DMU. First of all, we are going to say that the objective function is only maximization of the weighted output. We are not saying weighted efficiency. We are only saying weighted output because that's the numerator. So uh, essentially, uh, this is the output number one for DMU K. This is output number 2 for DMUK, this is output number 3 for DMUK, this is output number M for DMUK. These are the weights assigned to outputs by DMUK. Right, so that's your objective function. How do you normalize the denominator? You normalize the denominator by saying that that's your first constraint. So the first constraint is an equality constraint where you are uh, normalizing the input to 1, the weighted input to 1. So this is input number 1 for DMUK, this is input number 2 for DMUK. This is input number n for DMUK. These are the weights assigned by DMUK to various inputs, right? Now you notice how does this constant is going to play? The input values i1, i2, i3, in for this particular DMU, they cannot be changed. Uh, recall what were the input values? Input values were the budget, input values were the team sizes. Now those values cannot be uh, rescaled. The only thing that this constraint is going to do is it is going to assign the weights in such a way that this normalized equation is 1, right? The weighted input is 1, okay? The last thing to be done in this normalization step is to write the constraint carefully. Our earlier constraint was ek less than or equal to 1, which we said is a ratio of numerator divided by denominator and therefore it's a non-linear term. So let us rearrange this. We will say that norm, uh, numerator less than or equal to denominator. And uh, what is numerator? Numerator is the weighted output and denominator is the weighted input. And if we write it in this way, it's a ratio and therefore non-linear. If we write it in this way, it becomes a linear function of the output weights and the input weights. So let us write that. So uh, however, this should be applicable to all k's using my weights the dmuk dmuk is saying what using my weights nobody should get an efficiency of more than one including me so for dmu number one so this is k equal to one this is dmu number one dmu number one is saying how do i calculate my efficiency using dmuk's weights dmuk is going to use the weight y1k y2k ymk uh, input weights will be x1k, x2k, xnk. These are the weights used by DMU k. Now DMU 1 should get an efficiency of less than or equal to 1 using the weights used by DMU k. So the output values are corresponding to DMU number 1. i11, i21, in1, those are the inputs for DMU 1 right inputs for DMU1 but the weights are essentially taken from the weights used by DMU-K. That's what we mean. Using the weights that DMU-K is using, no other DMU should get an efficiency of more than one. So this is a constraint for the first DMU trying to use the weights for DMU-K and getting an efficiency of less than or equal to one. Similarly, DMU number two, Outputs are O1, uh, 1, 2, O2, 2, 2, OM2. Inputs are I12, I22, IN2. These are the inputs for DMU number 2. They are still using the weights for DMU K. Still using the weights for DMU K. So the weights have not changed. 
इट इज स्टिल वाई वन के वाई वन के वाई टू के वाई टू के एक्स थ्री के एक्स थ्री के समवेर राइट सो यूजिंग द वेट्स फॉर डी एम यू के डी एम यू नंबर टू शुड नॉट गेट एन इफिशियंसी ऑफ मोर देन वन सिमिलरली यू राइट द कंस्टेंट फॉर डी एम यू नंबर थ्री डी एम यू नंबर फोर डी एम यू नंबर फाइव ऑल द वे टू द लास्ट डी एम यू विच इज द कैपिटल के डी एम यू राइट कैपिटल के सो द आउटपुट इज ओ वन के ओ टू के कैपिटल के ओ एम के एक्स आई एन के आई टू के सो दो इनपुट वैल्यूज द वेट्स हाउ एवर आर स्टिल द सेम वेट्स दे आर द सेम वेट्स यूज बाई डी एम यू के सो दिस इज द डी एम दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम दैट डी एम यू के इज सॉल्विंग ऑब्वियसली द डिसीजन वेरिएबल्स आर द एक्स एंड वाई वेट्स यूज बाई दिस डी एम यू सो एक्स आई के एंड वाई जे के राइट हेयर इज अ डी एम यू के सॉल्विंग दिस प्रॉब्लम सिमिलरली देर विल बी एन ऑप्टिमाइजेशन प्रॉब्लम फॉर ईच डी एम यू ओके सो दिस इज हाउ यू फॉर्मुलेट एन ऑप्टिमाइजेशन प्रॉब्लम फॉर डेटा एनवेलपमेंट एनालिसिस एंड वी हैव स्पेंड टाइम एक्सप्लेनिंग द लॉजिक एंड वी हैव स्पेंड टाइम एक्सप्लेनिंग द मैथमेटिक्स एंड फॉर फाइनली लीनियराइजिंग द ऑब्जेक्टिव लीनियराइजिंग द ऑप्टिमाइजेशन प्रॉब्लम so that it's an easier problem to solve looks a little abstract the way the slide is all mathematical notations but in the next session we will actually use one of our examples and write this optimization problem in numerical terms so capital uh, i i k and capital o j k will get values based on the example that we have used so let us end the session here and go to the next session with examples